Hi everybody, I know this is a little bit of a different video to my usual sort of one but basically today it is a family member's birthday coming up so I am going to show you how to make this chocolate and orange drizzle cake with like love hearty marbled chocolate on top so if you wish to know how to make this then keep on watching the video Doo. Right, so first of all you need 175 grams of caster sugar and to that you need to add 175 grams of margarine if it's going to come out I'm wondering if I can do this in one whole take it will be a challenge then you need one of these babies right that is pretty creamy well creamed together now get all that excess off your mixer and then in here I've got sieved together or is it sifted I don't know I always say sieved but basically in here I've got uh, 150 grams of self-raising flour and 25 grams of cocoa powder so I'm going to add about a third of that in and then in here I have got three eggs that I've just whisked together so I'm going to add a bit of that as well right and then back in with this and the same again Same again. It's like real time is this? We're doing this together real time. And it helps so much if you've got everything weighed out already at the start. So another third and another third. I find the egg hardest to judge actually. And back in again. <laughs> sorry I'm not thinking what I'm saying when I'm concentrating um we need to make sure this is whizzed really really well this time seeing as we're not going to be going in again so all the egg is in right let's do this Jing. right so that my cloth is going crazy but that is all fluffy and nice now so because the person I am making this for really likes orangey things I'm making it a chocolate and orange cake so I've got the zest of one full orange here and I'm going to put about half of it in so I'm going to save the other half for the buttercream so that's that and then oh I could just drink this from the glass like this is so nice but I've got the juice of the same orange that I'd squeezed I'm going to just pop a bit of that in because again I'm going to save some for when the cake's been cooked and for the buttercream. So I'm going to whiz this round with my hand, my spatula. Get it all combined together. Oh it's so nice. I would miss eating things like this but still. It is nice that it's still able to make it for other people, definitely. I'm so sorry, I know I keep going out of frame with this. Oh, it smells, it literally smells so chocolatey and so orangey, which is the whole idea. Right, next up, I'm doing this in one take so far, I'm pretty impressed. Two tins, same size, come on, there we are. Where's the middle there? Two tins that are the same size that I have. Uh, greased with margarine and then put a, um, I cut out a disc of grease proof paper. And I'm literally just gonna shove half of it in one and half of it in the other. One blob for you, one blob for you, blob two for you. Blob two for you. Anyway, next, just got to shimmy it around and obviously because we've put self-raising flour in it's gonna rise anyway because that's the whole point of self-raising flour like that and if you give it a bang it all flattens and hopefully the air bubbles will go out as well right same with this one this is one of the hardest bits actually <laughs> 
I don't usually have to do this, as I say, because I usually do it in one pot. Right, they are done and prepared now, so these need to go into the oven on a middle shelf, gas mark 4, for 20 to 25 minutes. I'm going to do mine for about 22 and check. So let's go get them in the oven. So next up, while that's cooking, we need to prepare the buttercream, which I did do. So in here there's... Uh, 180 grams of sieved icing sugar and 90 grams of margarine butter and I just used that um, the electric whisk to whisk it together so today because it's been in the fridge for a bit it is going to take a little bit of work just to get to that creamy stage again but if you just do it now with a spatula it will come together right now it's gotten a little bit softer I'm going to add in the rest are, well, no, not the rest of them, actually. I might save some for the Do I want to save some for the top? No, I don't. Get it all in. The rest of the orange zest that we saved. A tiny splash of orange juice from before. And combine that. Totally need it in a bigger bowl, don't I, really? But I was running out of bowls yesterday when I was preparing everything. Ugh. Oh, that sounds gross and it also looks like it literally looks like mud doesn't it look like mud it will combine though oh my god I've never seen chocolate buttercream look so much like mud there we go you look like you could do a pair of wellies to go in here <laughs> there we go look that's the consistency you want now I think because I just got it out of the fridge, it was quite hard still. But there, that is nice creamy buttercream now. All ready to go onto the centre of the cooked cake. Beautiful. Right, rubbish point now, washing up point. And then more preparation. My microwave is broken at the minute, so I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. Need a pan which I'll fill with water when the time comes, and then don't let the water hit the bottom of the bowl, heat proof bowl so and this one oh, is going to go white chocolate got the milky bar kid if I can get it out it's working its way down if it doesn't want to come out it's like no don't burn me <laughs> so I need some white chocolate in there and then a bigger one because I'm doing more of milk chocolate this chocolate is 35p a bar and honestly it's the best to me the tesco one is terrible but this sainsbury's basic milk chocolate wouldn't it taste nice and two um i used to get it all the time and two it melts so so well and it goes really thick and it's a good chocolate so literally just gonna break this up and we are done i've got about 350 grams of chocolate in there and just a tidgy bit of white in there and you will see why later 25 minutes later they're out so i've just put one cooling racks to cool down and it appears to few holes which i'm sure you can see and i just poured the remainder of that orange juice over the top of him so it soaks through well it's hot and moist so it'll make it into a bit of an orange drizzle cake so they've come away from the sides the spongy so this is a good start now you need to put the buttercream onto the cake I turned it over so the flat side's on the other side. Now I'll put the buttercream on, just need to put the lid on top of it. I like that. And then, as you saw that, I've run that through, and the idea is it tries to look like a little love heart. That one went a bit wrong and dodgy, but some of them are pretty good, especially these two I like. 
So that is the cake. The chocolate is pretty hard now. I've put a little yellow ribbon around it to make it look extra nice and then I'm probably just going to decorate it like I've got happy birthday and some candles there. So that is the video so well it is the video and the cake so if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up. If you ever have made a chocolate and orange drizzle cake let me know. I'd be intrigued to know what your thoughts were about it and yeah thank you very much for watching. I know it was different from my usual and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye. And this is the finished cake. So we've got a ribbon, loads of candles, happy birthday, and then some fondant mum. So that is what it looks like.